Hi everyone and welcome back. Recently I did a video on cross-cultural kids and Ruth Van Recken's cross-cultural kid model. We looked at the different kinds of ways that you can have a cross-cultural experience in childhood. Now in that video I talked about there being similarities, overlaps between third culture kids and immigrant kids and I said I would talk about it later. And that's what we're going to talk about today is I'm going to expand a little bit on the relationship between third culture kids and immigrant kids what happens when someone's both um, and just just look at why so many immigrant kids relate to third culture kid literature what are the similarities and the differences between the two groups and yeah why why that's worth talking about i do often get asked are immigrant kids tck's technically the answer is no you could be both but an immigrant kid experience and a third culture kid experience are distinct similar with overlaps but distinct and I think it's important to lay out those distinct differences so that we can, again, not, not label or box people, but to recognize the experiences people have. To not just say, paint everyone with the same brush and say, everyone's a cross-cultural kid, it's the same. It's not the same. Every experience is unique. Every child is unique. Um, and I think it's important to recognize the variety of experiences. I mean, a big piece of my book looked at the variety of experiences within the third culture kid box, so to speak. Um, I think it's really important to see the variety. And I think there's something valuable about discussing both the similarities and the distinct differences between a third culture kid experience and an immigrant kid experience, in large part because I think the combination of those two is again different. It's not the same to be an immigrant kid, to be a TCK and to be both. Those are three different experiences and I think if we lump everyone together, we miss out on the intersectionality that's happening when a kid is a cross-cultural kid in multiple ways. You know, that they have different aspects of cross-cultural experiences happening simultaneously. So that said, let, let's move on a little bit and talk about what are the similarities and differences between the two. So, back to my standard definitions, third culture kid grows up in a country that's not their passport country that they intend to live in temporarily, even if temporarily is their entire childhood, um, that they're not expecting to get citizenship, they may not have the ability to legally to gain citizenship, um, there's an expectation that they are maintaining a passport country somewhere else that they'll go home to eventually. Often there's an expectation that they will settle there or at least go to university there. Um, it's the place that's seen often as home for them. So a TCK is growing up where I'm growing up in a country, building connections and emotional resonance in a country that I know is not my legal home. And I'm calling a place home that I may not have lived in or at least haven't lived in for quite some time that everyone else sees as my home but doesn't necessarily feel completely as home to me. I haven't had the comprehensive experience of that as my childhood home. An immigrant kid, especially one who moves quite young, has a similar experience in that they're not living in the country that their parents grew up in. And there's this sense that they're supposed to maintain connection to that culture of their parents even though they're not living there. Um, the big difference being that as an immigrant kid, they've moved to a country that they have or are in the process of gaining legal rights in, legal residence in. They're gaining a permanent residency or a passport in that country. And so the place that they're having those childhood experiences and building connections to is also recognised as their legal home. Now, they still have the complication of being expected to connect to their parents' culture, but there's that opposite experience of the TCK of the place where an immigrant kid lives is their legal home. The place where the TCK lives is not their legal home. Both are expected to maintain connection to their parents' culture, but there's a different kind of expectation as well. Um, for the immigrant kid, generally speaking, the country that they're living in, um, that is now their legal home, the people around them, the expectation is for them to assimilate into that culture, but to retain a connection to their, you know, heritage culture in another place. The people, the country that they're living in, look at them and see them as someone who is or is becoming one of us. For many third culture kids, 
they grow up with all the people around them seeing them as belonging to the country that their parents are from that they're not living in, their legal connection, right? There's this sense that where your passport is is where you are. An immigrant kid can definitely experience racism and other prejudice, and yet there's a sense that it comes from, you know, having the passport there roots you to that place, whether people like it or not. For a third culture kid, there's this expectation that you should be most connected to the place you're not living in. Now, both TCKs and American kids are dealing with parental pressures. Um, either parents who want them to really fully immerse in the culture that they're living in, or who want them completely connected to the country elsewhere, the parents' heritage home elsewhere. Um, both TCKs and immigrant kids have that experience of dealing with the parental expectations, regardless of which direction it goes. Um, both of them deal with that sense of, who am I in the middle of this? Am I 100% my passport country? Am I 100% my heritage country? Am I 100% the place I'm living or the place that I'm from? Like, and, and the answer is never easy. Uh, everyone has to find their accommodation of how to be both. Um, you get a lot of immigrant communities who identify with these double barrel names. I think the example I used last time was Vietnamese Australian. Um, and you see this in a lot of places where people will double barrel their heritage culture and their passport country together to explain their cultural experience, that they are both. Um, that they are not just Vietnamese or just Australian, that both of those are part of their identity. Um, you get Malay Chinese, where they're Malay citizens, have lived in Malaysia their whole life, but Chinese culture is an important piece of who they are as well. So whatever the double barrel is, whatever part of the world we're in, um, in a lot of immigrant communities there's that sense of recognising that tussle between the two cultures and how do you embrace both, how do you accommodate both, how do you find out who you are in the middle of this. Um, and there's lots of great literature movies, books that deal with that um, cultural perspective of how do you work out how to be both at once. For TCKs, I feel like that same struggle exists, but is less recognised, less legitimised. I think immigrant communities, there's this strong expectation understanding that of course you're connected to your passport country and of course you're connected to your heritage culture. And so there's this acceptance that you can be both. Uh, that may not have been true 50 years ago uh, in some parts of the world probably still isn't true. But there's these legitimate claims to both countries. I think that people recognise that you are allowed to feel the strong connection to both of those pieces. Whereas for a lot of the culture kids, everyone sees, okay, yep, of course you feel the connection to your passport country. A lot of people dismiss the depth of connection that their culture kids can feel to their host country, to the places where they're living, if they have no heritage there and they have no passport there. But a lot of kids I've talked to haven't really lived anywhere else. You know, I've talked to lots of kids who grew up here in China who had never really lived anywhere else. They were born in China, lived their childhood in China, and didn't move to their passport country until they finished high school. Um, from all parts of the world, you know, I've talked to diplomat kids from smaller African countries who left at the age of four and never went back, like not even for holidays. And yet everywhere they go, they're known by that passport country. So they're representing a country that they have no living memory of. I think that struggle is part of what defines the TCK experience, is that by a multi multicultural identity not being legitimised in the same way. I'm not saying that the identity struggles that go with an immigrant kid experience don't count. They absolutely do. What I'm saying is there's a balance where both of those groups are dealing with those conflicts, dealing with finding their own accommodation, dealing with working out how to balance these different aspects of who they are. Uh, generally speaking, TCKs have less recognition and support of that role unless they're plugged into TCK communities with this kind of knowledge and literature and support. And even sometimes when they do, I think it can be difficult for parents 
to recognise that their kids aren't just their heritage culture. Now, there are definitely immigrant parents who struggle with that too, who think you should be completely Chinese or you should be completely American or you should be completely French, whatever the passport heritage culture of the parents was before they immigrated and that you get this passport but you should say culturally safe. There are definitely parents who, who delegitimize that cultural experience and cross-cultural identity of their children. Um, I think that is more common for TCKs to have that delegitimized. The other thing I think that's worth talking about in this space is the intersectionality, right? I think I, I mentioned that at the top, that you could be both a TCK and an immigrant kid. And I've, I've interviewed a lot of kids who were both of these, where their family immigrated from country A to country B, lived in country B for a while, and then were expatriates in country C. So their passport's from country B, and they've got the heritage from country A, and they're living in country C. So they've got both experiences where they're juggling their parents' heritage culture, their passport culture, and then the TCK issue of the country that they're living in, that's neither their heritage nor their legal culture. Um, and there's a few specific experiences that go with that. One of them is that some of these kids end up with a stronger connection to their heritage culture because of having other expats from that culture. So an example I used in my book was Korean Americans living in China. So parents were born in Korea, kids were born in the US, then were raised in China. And they grew up speaking all three languages, celebrating holidays from all three countries. But you had these Korean American kids mixing with Korean kids and American kids in China. And so their connection to Korean culture looked different because it wasn't just Korean Americans they were around, it was Korean Koreans who were living as expats in China. And so a lot of these kids had a stronger connection to the Korean language and culture than they might have growing up in the US. Um, and I've seen that in other expat immigrant experiences where they've had connections to their parents' heritage culture directly in a way they wouldn't have um, as immigrants in their passport country. And that's one of the particular overlaps that happens there, which in some ways gives them a much more positive connection to their heritage culture, culture, and in other ways gives them a more complicated connection to their heritage culture. Um, because, you know, they have these three, not competing loyalties, but on the same footing kind of loyalties. They're these three countries that are all very important to them. And so finding a way to be not just Korean or American or even Korean American, but to be a TCK with these multiple influences. Um, you know, there's a unique struggle there that the TCKs don't entirely understand and the immigrants don't entirely understand. It's these immigrant expat families um, who have both experiences, have their own special um, cross-cultural conflict to process. And I really think that intersectionality is the most important reason to differentiate these different experiences so that we can recognise the intersectionality, the experience of having multiple cross-cultural experiences at once. Um, I know multiple people who hit, you know, four or five boxes on that chart, Ruth's cross-cultural kid model. And so those experiences lay on top of one another. They are not just TCKs. It's, they're a TCK and bicultural and multi-ethnic and immigrant kid or whatever it is, right? Like um, having those layers of experience, recognizing that each of those experiences is slightly different, even though they overlap, and that it adds complexity and layers <laughs> and that intersectionality to their experience. So that's my little explanation of TCKs and immigrant kids, that they have a lot of emotional overlap, but the experiences are able to be, you know, split apart into slightly separate categories. I think a lot of immigrant kids find TCK literature really helpful because there's so much emotional overlap in it. And a lot of the issues that are around identity and cultural complexity, um, totally apply to immigrant kids as much as they apply to TCKs. And so if immigrant kids are finding this literature helpful, fantastic, go for it, get as much of it into you as you can. Um, and if not, don't worry about it. Same for the TCKs. You know, I, 
I, I, what I want in, in the work that I do is to legitimize how people feel. Not to say they should feel a certain way, but to go, here's how a lot of people feel. Here are some different options of, of how people have dealt with this experience. Here are some tools to help you find your way. Um, whether I'm talking to parents, to educators, to students, to young adults who've had these experiences, to be able to say, you make sense. Here are some tools to help you process your experience and to help you create a life that works for you. Because that's the goal. The goal is not to go, you are an immigrant kid and you are this and you are not that. Or to go, you're a TCK and you are like this. That's not the goal at all. The goal is to go, here are some people who've had experiences like you. Here are some things that have helped them. Here are some things that might help you. Why don't you open a space and talk about this? So feel free to disagree. Feel free to tell me what you think. Um, you know, do you think that immigrant kids and TCKs are virtually the same? Are they very different? Do you agree with my... Ex my explanation of the overlaps, the similarities and the differences. I'd love to hear from you and especially if you are an immigrant kid or both an immigrant kid and a TCK, you know, what do you think? Um, does this line up with how you feel or does it not? Um, what have you got to add to, co to the conversation? I would love your input. So thanks for watching, thanks for listening and I hope to see you again soon. Bye everyone.